I'll make it? Too bad. Better get a doctor. Yeah, take a wagon. Frank Slater, Jesse will follow? Yeah. This time I've seen them within shouting distance of each other for a long time. Get in there. Yeah. Saw the buzzards. Thought I'd come over and see what the bad news was. Figured you'd know. What does that mean? Means the nesters aren't satisfied with one steer for the table anymore. Now they're stealing whole herds. Pretty quick to blame the nesters, aren't you, Slater? Ah, oh, you're not much more than a nester yourself. Don't call me that. I don't know. Right, right, that's enough to both of you. Come on. Is he hurt bad? Yeah, I sent Haas for a doctor, but. We went on down the ravine. Tracks on both sides, they split the herd. The way I make it, there were four of them. Sometime last night. Well, I've had enough. Is the Cattlemen's Association going to do something about it or not? Well, we'll have a meeting tomorrow night at the Ponderosa. It takes more than meetings, Ben. The Association better hire somebody to stop this rustling, or I'm going to do it with my own men. I have to burn out every nester in Nevada. <laughs> strong because I've got a lot to lose. I know the small spreads are hurting too, but where they losing one head, I'm losing four. More than 50 head a month and I'm losing men too. Now you saw what they did to Ryan out on the range yesterday. And if he dies, you can add murder to the charge. But we've got to do something about it. We've got to bring a man in here to stop it and I've got just the man. Yeah. You fight fire with fire, Ben. Fire is contagious. So is killing. I've seen it happen much too often. All right. It's been proposed that this association hire a range detective to eliminate rustling. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Father, you mind if I say something? It's all right for the members of this association. Oh. Yeah. You volunteering, Joe? No, no, not me, Mr. Slater, but I think I've got a good man for the job. Dan Logan. Dan Logan? Yeah, he's a good hand, scouted for the Army, marshaled a couple of tough towns, always used his head. He's one of your own men, isn't he? Look, I just think Dan Logan would be a good man. He did a fine job in Tucson and Wickenburg. I don't care who you get. Just so as he works on a fee system. That's really asking for trouble, Frank. $300 for every rustler brought in, tried and convicted, or brought in dead. All in favor? Deputized, range detective. What's that? That's me, Miss Lewis. You better watch your step. Forty dollars a month. Is that all? You make that at the Ponderosa. Ah, but there's a little bonus too. Are you going to tell me? 
I get $300 for every wrestler I arrest and they convict. Is it dangerous? It's nothing I can't handle. Oh, take good care of yourself, Dad. Oh, Anita, this, nothing can happen to me as long as I've got you. Except maybe get rich with all these rustlers running around. Oh, think of it, honey. California, a new life. Chance to start all over again. Don't expect it to be any different in California, Dan. I don't. Oh, it will be. You'll see, especially if we've got money. I don't think money can buy what you want. Waste time tracking you. Hey, you and your Indian tricks. Where'd you learn that one? Yeah, Apaches down White Mountain Way. Men can learn a lot from Apaches. I imagine. What you doing out here? My job. Picked up trail of some cows. No strays? Shot horses pushing them, moving off Ponderosa grass. Come on, let's go. That's my job, Joe. Yeah, my cattle, Dan. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, sounds good. Whatever made you give up being a lawman anyway, Dan? You're good at it. The towns were getting too rough, Joe. And the killing. You kill a man, it takes something out of your own life. Yeah. Well, what makes you take this job, then? Oh, it's not the same. I don't have to kill to get paid. I just bring the wrestlers in and let the jury decide what happens. It means $300 to me for every conviction. I've got somebody I want to spend it on. I'm moving west, Joe. Settling down. Well, now. What do you think? Well, it could be somebody warming their hands. Well, they're branding irons. <laughs> Just hold it right like that, boys. Joe, take a look at the brand on that cow. Ponderosa. Well, now, you boys got a bill of sale for those animals? No better than that, Logan. All right, boys, get your horses. Wait a minute, now you're beautiful. You know it. Haven't I told you that before? Yes, but I'm too smart to believe you. You don't look so bad yourself. I love you, Anita. Virginia City's in for a big treat. You never give up, do you? You want me to? Those rustlers are in trouble. You're the most stubborn man I've ever seen. You bet I am. Look. You hang on tight. I want everybody to know that you are my girl. <laughs> Where are we going? Anita, we're going to the Palace Hotel. We're going to order a couple of the biggest steaks in the house and then a bottle of champagne. Imported French champagne. Dan, please. Who does she think she is? 
this on her. It's me. You ought to know that by now. You only look at me, Dan. She sees me. Anita, I'm tired of hearing you talk like that. Don't be upset, honey. I'm used to it. Women, ladies always know. I don't know how. I'm not cut out for ice cream socials and sewing bees. They know it and I know it. So let's go back. You can't spend the rest of your life in two rooms on D Street. Why not? Because I want more for you. It won't work, Dan. I've tried it before. Now we both know this is my side of the street. Why don't you let me go back to work? Don't you ever say that again. I'm not the kind of girl for the dreams you dream. Oh, Anita, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Listen, honey, I've got $1,200 coming for bringing the Kells brothers in. Let's go somewhere else and we'll start all over again. Okay. You talk to me about it when you get the $1,200. Speaking for the Cattlemen's Association? <laughs> I was just wondering if you were going out again. Or did you decide to give it up? Well, the rustlers must be wondering the same thing. I'll just let you wonder, too. Will that be all, Mr. Slater? I'll leave the bottle. I'm just getting started. Another hung jury. Those rustlers were as good as free before the trial even started. You know, the judge didn't even bother to thank that jury. I guess he thought they'd get enough thanks from the Kells brothers. Well, what now? I'm going to bring in so many rustlers, they'll get tired of turning them loose. I didn't know there were that many. There's plenty. One even got on today's jury. It'll be different next time. I'll have so much evidence, the jury will be afraid to let him go. Rustlers are going to try and kill you, Dan. I know that. And with our luck, it's just liable to happen. Dan. Dan, look at me. Take a good look. I'm not worth getting killed for. If anybody gets killed, Anita, it won't be me. Right over here, the drinks are on me. No, thanks. What'd it be, men? What beer for me? Oh, beer, beer. Free beer. Free beer. You see Dan Logan around? Yeah, he was here earlier. Took off about an hour ago. Any idea where he went? Well, he has a lady friend up on D Street. <laughs> I didn't know there were any ladies up on D Street. <laughs> I think I'm gonna look for him. We need some cheering up after the verdict. You coming back? Yeah, wait for me. Hi, Joe. Mr. Hill. Hi, Jeff. Candy. Hi, what? Jeff Hart. Good. What do you have? Uh, whiskey, please. Well, well. Jess. You're just the man I want to see. I got some business with you. Only my friends call me Jess. And it'll be a cold day when I do business with you. Yeah, well, I, I didn't say you were going to like it. 
The fact is, I don't think you will like it. If there's anyone I like less than Frank Slater sober, it's Frank Slater drunk. Just take it easy. There's no sense in starting trouble. Well, uh, I'm gonna move some of my sock up on the West Fork Range. I need the water. You are drunk. Look, I'm only telling you so that you can... you can move your scrubs off of there before I move on. I'll make soap out of the first big tea cow I see. That's open range, Hill. Slater, Slater. Kellum Association ain't gonna let you do that. And I'm not either. I got a lease now. Well, I'm breaking it. You cow-stealing nester. Now wait right there. Take it easy, Jess. Yeah. Both of you take it easy. And I'm tired of him calling me a rustler. Make your play, Slater. Or yes. back down. Slater. Don't let booze do your thinking for you. Well, what's it gonna be? Dan. Oh, he's not here then, huh? Um, no, he left a while ago. Well, look, if he, if he comes around, would you tell him Joe Cartwright was looking for him? Of course. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright, can I talk to you a moment? It's about Dan. Sure. It's the verdict. Yeah, I, I know he's pretty upset about it. Can I get you something? Uh, a drink, coffee? No, no, thank you. I, uh... I miss Dan after the trial. Do you have any idea where he is? No, he went out of here mad. I've never seen him so angry. I don't know what he might do. I wouldn't worry about it. I think it'd be all right. Don't be so sure. That verdict meant an awful lot to him. He had plans, you know. Does that mean I'm gonna get a chance to wear my new suit and throw a little rice? Do I look like the kind of girl you'd bring home to mother? <laughs> oh, come on, Mr. Cartwright. Don't be so uh, uncomfortable. Huh? You'll spoil my reputation. I'm supposed to make men happy. Yeah, well, uh, apparently you make Dan happy. Huh? Uh, let's say I uh, don't mean him harm. Did, did he tell you that he had plans to go away and start all over? Yeah, yeah we talked about it a little bit on the trail. Sounded like a pretty good idea to me. Sure, if that's what you want. Well, you make it sound like it's not what you want. I've been around a long time. It's a little bit late to start over, don't you think? No, I don't think so. Dan doesn't think so either. You know, <laughs> he uh, took a look at me one day and saw a girl standing by a fireplace in polka dots, waiting for him to come home. What he got was me. I think it looked real good in polka dots. <laughs> no, I don't think it fits my complexion. Well, anyway, it's over. The jury took care of that. Maybe I ought to be doing what the Kells brothers are doing, rustling cattle. <laughs> you better be careful, Dan will be after you. Good night. Good night. money, Ike. Brand. Frank Slater's not gonna like you. Matter of fact, you boys don't leave any brand alone, do you? 
Logan, how'd you know I was here? I got my ways, I... Won't do any good. Jury just turned me loose again. And then I'll just bring you right back in again. Simple as that. Now get these hides together. If you're gonna bring in the evidence, it'll put you away. What's up, Logan? I just brought Ike Kells in. He's dead. This has been fired three times. He tried to take me when my back was turned. But his luck and his aim were both bad. I'll be in the saloon if you want me. before I turn you over my knee. I get this straight, Billy, because I'm only going to tell you once. Your brother tried to kill me. His gun was out of the holster before he was shot. Don't make me kill you, Billy.
reckon Logan saw us? Yeah. You think he'll take the bait? I don't know why not. A blind man couldn't miss the trail we left. Up here, boys. Well, they're up to their old tricks again, Clem. What about Barney? Why he got away? I hope you brought some evidence. I'm tired of turning rustlers loose in the cell. Well, they got a whole herd bottled up in a draw near Slater's place. If that isn't enough, they tried to ambush a duly appointed officer of the law. Looks like you need a doctor, son, and a lawyer. I'll get you the doctor. He never even gave us a chance. It's a better chance than you were giving me. Do you have to do that? Yes. It's very annoying. Well, you just have to put up with it. I'm doing it for you. Don't do me any favors. Now, why do you think I'm doing it? Cleaning your gun? It must be dirty. Well, you know what I mean. Why do you think I took this job? Why? You answer that, and maybe I'll know why you took a job hunting down men. Because I need you, Anita. I love you. Love? My love doesn't cost that much. Who is it? Frank Slater. Frank, I don't want to talk to you now. Worth a thousand dollars to you. Hello, Dan. You said a thousand dollars? It's personal. Well, I'm listening. Jess Hill is sealing my calves. Can you prove that? See for yourself. You're wearing a badge. Take a run out to the West Fork Range and look at the young stock wearing fresh brands. All right. What about the money? Dead or alive? Of course, there's a there's an extra three hundred from the association if he's dead. I'm Dan Logan. Is your daddy home? Dan Logan, you're the one that brought in all those rustlers, aren't you? Where's your father? I'm Pete Hill. Pete? Hello, Dan. I need to talk to you, Jess. Nice to meet you, son. Same here. You go about your choice, son. What's on your mind, Dan? Frank Slater claims he's losing calves. Go on. He says he's losing them to you. Slater's a liar. When do you brand your young stock? Roundup, same as everybody. Why? Well, on the way over here, I saw a mother and a calf. The mother wore Slater's big T, and the calf was a fresh tumbling K. Now, it doesn't take much to change a big T into tumbling K. Are you accusing me? I'm being paid to stop rustlers. And I don't care if the rustlers are members of the association that pays me. Now, if you're doing it, you better get ready to stand trial or run or whatever suits you. Pete! Something wrong, Pat? Listen, Pete. I want you to ride over to the Ponderosa. Tell Ben Cartwright that I gotta see him. Tell him I'm afraid to leave. Tell him it's important. Take my horse, get there as fast as you can. You bet, Paul.
Pete. Pete! My son was shot. He was just a kid. How is he? I don't know. Doc, Doc wouldn't let me stay. How did it happen? Dan Logan put two bullets in my son's back. Did you see it? I didn't have to see it. Pete was riding my Palomino and wearing my jacket. Logan thought that he was shooting at me. <laughs> Tell it from the beginning, Jess. Well, he came out to, to my place, Logan. And he said he'd found some calves that had been branded. I mean, the brands had been changed. And he accused me of stealing cows. I sent Pete to get Ben Cartwright. Now, just take your time, Jess. <laughs> If only I had gone myself. I found him out near that ridge on the West Fork. Ambushed. My son was ambushed. Now listen to me, everybody. Dan Logan shot my son for $300. Now you all know I don't have much. But I'll give it all to the man that brings him in. I want Dan Logan in jail. And if my son dies, God help me, I want him to hang! Stop. Don't you see what you're doing? Where would you, Jess? I'm ready to ride out right now. No one's riding anywhere unless I say so. Now, you break it up. Go on home. If I need a posse, I'll let you know. Go on. Go on about your business, all of you. Dan Logan never backshot anybody in his life. He'd never ambush anybody. He has a girl in town. You know her? I met her. Her name's Anita. You know where she lives? Yeah. Oh, come in. You know the sheriff. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on my way to work. I'm looking for Dan Logan. Where can I find him? I wouldn't know. He's not here. When will he be back? I don't know. He left on business. What's, what's this all about? What kind of business? How do I know? Business. Uh, Frank Slater came by. What did he want? Oh, I was in the other room. These walls are paper thin. What did they talk about? I, I was asleep. And how'd you know he was here? I woke up. You heard him? No. Yeah. Oh. I don't know what I mean. What do you want me to say? Why don't you try the truth? I'm telling the truth. Look, Sheriff, I don't know anything. I gotta go to work. I don't want to be late. You won't get there at all unless you start cooperating. Ask anybody. Anita cooperates. All right, let's start all over. Slater was here last night. He talked with Logan. What about him? I don't know. Get packed. What for? I'm gonna float you out of town. You got just about 10 minutes. Why? I don't need a reason. Oh, look, Sheriff. Um, it was that cattleman's business, rustling. $1,300 doesn't grow on trees. Now, Dan's been trying to... Now, for how's a he going to make $1,300? Well, isn't that what he does for a living? Bringing rustlers? He gets paid $300 a piece. You said $1,300. Why? I meant $300. Get your stuff.
Can't I stay here? I don't have anywhere to go. Tell me about last night. I'll give you one minute to make up your mind. Frank Slater offered Dan Logan a thousand dollars to stop Jess Hill from rustling his cattle. You can go to work now, Miss Levis. Three shots in the air. The rest of us will catch up. The Cattlemen's Association has offered a thousand dollars reward. Another thousand has been donated by Jesse's friends. Now, all of you know what Logan can do with a gun, so don't let this reward get in your eye. All right, let's go. Another Apache trick? Yeah. Comes in handy when you're back shooting kids. I don't believe that. You're the only one who doesn't. Shots came from somewhere near that gully over there. How is the kid? He's got a good chance. I hope so. Seemed like a nice kid when I met him. Dan, the sheriff's looking for you. I know. He's leading the posse I've been tracking. You got a $2,000 reward on your head. You're gonna have to come into town with me. Sheriff's a fair man. He'll give you an even break. He believes I did it. With $2,000 on my head, I'd never make it to town. Dan, I'm gonna have to take you in. You'll have to kill a friend to do it. <laughs> Catch up to you sometime. You said we were going to be alone. Get out of here, Charlie. Well, look, I don't know who you think you are, but get out. Ah! <laughs> 
what's in my house. Yeah, I offered him $1,000. Why not? I want to see this rustling stopped. 300 wouldn't do it, I figured 1,000 would. But I didn't tell him to shoot anybody. Especially not a, an 18-year-old boy. He thought he was shooting at me. We all know that, Jesse. Well, what kind of a bullet you take out of the boy's body? 4440, same as Logan's. All right, same as Logan, same as yours, same as mine. We've all got 4440s. So, what are you getting at? Out by the ravine where the boy was shot, I found these shell casings. 4440s, what about them? Take a look at the primer. They're scarred up. Probably a splintered firing pin. How's the firing pin on Logan's rifle? This rifle never fired those shells. Take a look at this one. Firing pin split almost in half. Whose is it? I just took it off of Frank Slater's horse. Oh, wait a minute. Why? Go! Hold it! Hold it! Slater, you and Logan are gonna swap places. Frank, change the brand on your own cows. I'm sorry, Jesse. So am I. Thank you, Joe. Are you sure you don't want to stick around, huh? A lot of places I haven't seen yet, Joe. Where are you heading? Nowhere. Anywhere. Keep in touch. Keep looking behind you. I'll catch up to you sometime. in your wallet. Hey, mister, stop right there. You all right? Yeah. Where is he? It's Jim Campbell. He's dead. Did you know him? Yeah, a little. He, he has a farm near the Ponderosa. That's yours? Yeah. He slugged me and grabbed it. The wallet's worth more than what's in it. Three dollars.
of his coroner's inquest is to learn all we can about the manner and cause of James Campbell's death. Now, how well did you know him? I talked to him once or twice. He... We had a drink together once. When you saw him take something out of Mr. Travis's coat, did you know who he was? No, it was too dark. But you were certain he had a gun in his hand? Yes, I could see that. Did you know that a robbery had been committed? No, not until later. But there was one man lying on the ground and another one running away with a gun in his hand. He ran out of the alley. I shouted at him to stop and he started firing at me. That's all, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you. I'll try to make this as brief and painless as I can, Mrs. Campbell. You and your husband bought a farm on Red Spring Road about two years ago. What is the condition of that farm now? Well, we were making a go of it. Just barely. Everything we made had to be put back into it. We were hoping that next year uh, might be a better year. On the 11th, your husband came into town. Can you tell us why? Our uh, mortgage payment was due. Jim was going to try to get a loan from Mr. Morgan at the bank. Against a crop of votes we were putting in. Did he have any hope of getting that loan? He'd been turned down twice, but he was going to try. It is the finding of the coroner's jury that Mr. Kennedy killed James Campbell in self-defense. While we sympathize with the widow, it is clear that her husband died while committing a crime. No charge will be made against Mr. Kennedy. The inquest is adjourned. Mrs. Campbell. There's not much I can say. Well, why don't you just say what there is to be said and be done with it? I'm, uh, sorry. You're right. That's not much. Miss Campbell, you dropped this letter. I'll be glad to mail it for you, if you'd like. You do that, Mr. Kennedy. Right. I know this is a bad time of the year to be asking for time off. But there's something I've got to do. So I'm going to have to knock off a little early every afternoon for a while. Any idea how long? Maybe a couple of months. <whistles> Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll do my share. Just take whatever you think is fair out of my pay. Well, no question of that. All right. All right. Anything else? No. A candy. There's something else I'd like to say. That coroner's jury declared you innocent. Now, don't you go off convicting yourself. I won't. But when I have a debt, I pay it. <laughs> My name's Candy. What's yours? Your mother around? Thank you. My name's Candy. I'll remember. That. I can manage. The furrows aren't very straight. But then plowing's not a woman's work, is it? What are you planting? Oats. At least we had that seed paid for. Now, if you don't mind. If, uh, 
If you're trying to do this all by yourself, you've got to be behind on your other chores. Let me do the plowing and, and you tend to that. And, uh, Kenny. Finished for the day. I took care of the team. I left the plow up in the field. I don't expect any thanks. But you're going to have to tell me if you want me to come back. I didn't ask for your help, Mr. Kennedy. That's right, you didn't. Understood. I didn't want you around here. You also thought you could keep this place up by yourself, didn't you? Well, look at it. There's no wood for the kitchen stove. The door has fallen off the hen house. The plow needs to be done. The fences need to be fixed. You had to stop trying to keep up to do the washing. I don't want your help. We need somebody's. I'm doing just fine by myself. Nobody's come around, huh? Well, why should they? It's a busy time. They've got their own things to do. Well, then it better be me, because you need help. What makes you so pig-headed? I was about to ask you the same question. Ponderosa nail. Uh, most of it's for Ben. Do uh, you have anything for Mrs. Campbell? Mrs. Campbell, huh? I um, heard you were doing the chores out there. For me? Chores and plowing. Working two places at once must be kind of exhausting. Just give me your mail. No offense intended. One letter. Here, can I don't spill? Thank you. There's a uh, letter for you at the post office. You didn't have to go to that trouble. That's all right. I was going by anyway. Uh, won't you come in? Look, you're sopping wet. The storm will likely be over by the time dinner's finished. If you'd care to stay. I would. If you'd like to get out of those wet clothes, I think I can find a shirt and a pair of pants for you. 
No, thanks. I, uh, I'll just dry it here by the fire. Food smells good. I'll be ready in a minute. It's not very fancy, but it's hot. No hurry. You didn't have to help with this. I enjoyed the dinner. It looks like he's had quite a day. Yes. He does that all the time. Excuse me. I'm going to go tuck him in bed. Will you let me carry him? No, that's all right. I'll no, do please, it. please let me. His father used to do it. I see. The rain stopped. I better be on my way. Thank you for bringing the letter. He didn't even read it yet. Came all the way from Wyoming, too. Good night, Mr. Kennedy. Good night. Thank you. when I was a kid. I can still remember. He can be a handful. Sometimes I think raising a child's harder than breaking a colt. Oh, no, no. Kids are easier. With a kid, you don't have to worry about a saddle. Oh. Maybe you're right. I never thought about it that way. Can you stay for dinner? No, thanks. Making a place for me at your table takes food away from you and Kenny. I'm used to feeding three. I I've invited a friend to dinner. He hasn't answered me yet. goes all day, I'm not surprised. That piece of pie? Oh. Oh, I've had two already. <laughs> That's a handsome pie, Mrs. Campbell. Lisa. I've always been partial to rhubarb pie. I just never found anyone who could make it as well as Anne, not till now. And your sister? 
My wife. I didn't know you were married. I'm not. It was over a long time ago. You never remarried? No, I had too much wandering to do. That's no life for a woman. Now, you, that's a different story. I don't think I know what you mean. You're young. You're pretty. And you're a widow. You've got a son. You've got a farm you're dead set on keeping and you can't do it alone. It's time you started thinking about a husband. I think it's a little too soon for that. Now, how did I get on that subject? That's much too serious. Yes. Yes, it's much too serious. Come on, have another piece of coffee. It's just going to go to waste. <laughs> no, go to waste with Kenny in there. He could eat the whole thing by himself. Yeah, maybe you're right. Was it very long before you stopped missing your wife? Long time. I guess maybe that's why I started wandering. Sometimes I still miss her. Yes. Thank you for telling me. Better get these dishes. Give me help. No, no. Well, you've got a long ride home. Somebody tied this across the trail just high enough to knock a rider off his horse. Well, they must have done it sometime late last night. I came along the trail in the afternoon. It wasn't there then. It's new. Anybody bought it in Virginia City, Mr. Thompson ought to know who it was. No, the only thing he knows about is local gossip. Yeah, but... Why was it done? Well, if that's somebody's idea of a joke, I'd have to stay around and, and watch to enjoy it. I didn't see anyone around there. Those tracks were on that trail out there. Nobody ever uses except when they're coming here at the house. No, it wasn't done for a joke, Candy. I think you'd better be very careful. Where's Kenny? He's up uh, with Mrs. Party. I didn't want to bring him here to the grave. He thinks Jim's just gone away. I guess he misses his father. A little. Now. He'll forget after a while. They do at that age, you know. Maybe after a while I will, too. It's been such a short while. And I can't even remember what Jim's voice sounded like. I loved him, Candy, and I can't remember. 
That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. But I loved him. I know. Please forgive me. I didn't mean to embarrass you. You didn't embarrass me. You got my shirt a little soggy, though. We better get back. I have to get Kenny. Mrs. Party will want to get back to her family. She left Kenny with us. Uh, she said something about not having any more time to wait for you. She flew out of here with all her feathers ruffled the wrong way. I don't understand. Well, she went back to the cemetery looking for him. She came back, just left the boy with us, and walked off. It's just a little something I picked up along the trail. What is it? Oh, it's nothing you'd be interested in. But what? Oh, Candy, they're beautiful. Isn't that just like a woman every time? <laughs> they're pretty over the practical. This is dinner. Eat. You can't eat flowers. Nobody ever gave me flowers before. I never gave anyone flowers before. <laughs> There's a hole in the north fence. I'll get to it. You don't want any deer wandering around trampling down your new crop. I'll put these in water. They'll look beautiful on the table at dinner. All from the uh, Ponderosa, huh? Thought sure Mrs. Campbell would be having some. She's been sending a lot of letters out lately. Mrs. Campbell doesn't need you to mind her business. Over me. See here, Mr. Kennedy, it's my job to read what's written on these here letters. How do you think I can stamp them right anyway? And then there's the proper charge. You call it whatever you want. Just keep your nose on that side of the counter. Kenny? Kenny! <laughs> Hiya, buddy. Kenny, I think you better get down. Sure is nice of Kennedy to help out the widow like he does. <laughs> Ain't that a picture? Of course, uh, used to be your husband did that. <laughs> Three dollars and a nickel bullet and Kennedy's got himself a lady friend. <laughs> shut up, Devlin, shut up! Goes to prove I'm right. Candy, please. I don't blame you, Kennedy. She's a good-looking woman. Get in the wagon. I'll get your supplies. Go on. Kenny, now change your clothes. Now, why can't you come out here anymore? I didn't say that. I said it'd be better if I didn't come out here as much. But why? The planning's done. The repairs are finished. I don't have to be out here all the time. The car rates are paying me. Lisa, they expect me to work for it, for them. I know, Candy, I know. They've been very kind. But we need you. That's another thing we have to talk about. Don't you want to see us anymore? Yes, I do. 
And I will. By coming out here so often doesn't look good to those waggle tongues in town. Oh, it's only a few. I know, and they're gossips, and everyone knows it. But they do listen. Well, I don't care what they say. Yes, you do. You, you cared when I had to flatten Devlin just now to shut him up. And, and at least he talks out loud. What about the ones that talk behind your back? They're the ones that really hurt. And, and you're too easily hurt now, Lisa. You got Kenny to think of. What do we do? I'll come out on Saturdays, and we'll... If there's any heavy work to be done, I'll do it then. We've gotten used to having you around here. Me and Kenny. I know. It's gonna be a long time till Saturday. my land now. Oh, <laughs> you don't mean that. It's because a fellow had a little nip and you want to run him off. I'm warning you, get out of here. <laughs> Bet you don't run off that candidate. Stay right there. You ain't gonna shoot me. I wouldn't bet on that. Now leave. I'm betting that ain't loaded. Well, you're just gonna have to take your chances, mister. <laughs> now, come here. Cut it out. I ain't gonna hurt you. You might even get the light me. <laughs> come here. Come here, you. <laughs> you got no stake in this cart, right? Maybe not, but... Let's go see what the sheriff has to say. No. Ma'am? If you do that, everybody in town will hear about it. Well, just want to let him walk off? Is that what you want? Please. Get out of here, Devlin. <laughs> go. He's likely to come back, ma'am. Oh, I don't think so. Next time I'm going to see that my gun's loaded. I hope you understand, Hoss. There's just been so much talk about this already. I'm hoping this way he'll be a little too embarrassed to say much about it. Well, I, I hope so for your sake, ma'am. Forgive me, I haven't even said thank you. Guess it's lucky for me you were coming by when you did. Well, it wasn't just happening by, ma'am. As a matter of fact, I was on my way over here. Candy said that you might need some help today, so I thought I'd come down and volunteer. Well, how come he didn't come? Well, the doctor wouldn't let him. Candy had a little hard luck. The fellow took a pot shot at him, just grazed him here in the arm. Nothing serious, but the doctor won't let him out. He's lucky. He could have been killed. Mason, what's the matter? Hoss told me you'd been shot. Is that all? Don't let this thing fool you. It's not serious. It's not Devlin. I know that. It was a gunfighter. I don't know what kind of game he's playing with you, Candy, but he's serious. How do you know all this? He's Jim's brother. I asked him to come here to kill you. I wrote a letter before the inquest. All I could think of was that you'd killed Jim and I wasn't going to let you go unpunished. It was a letter you picked up and mailed. I didn't know you, Candy. All right. All right, I understand why you did it. 
Lucky for you, you had a gunman in the family. Jim and I hadn't seen Jake in over five years. I wasn't even sure I could reach him. After you came to help us, I realized I was only trying to hurt you to make up for losing Jim. I wrote and tried to stop Jake. I thought I reached him in time, but I guess I didn't. Candy, I'm sorry. So am I. You should have tried to kill me yourself, Lisa. It's more honest, anyway. I thought you ought to know about Jake. I don't know where he is, but at least now you can be on your guard. Oh, so I can go hide in the bunkhouse until you call him off if you can find him? No, thanks. Candy, he's going to kill you. Isn't that what you wanted? Isn't it? No. No, not anymore. But I don't expect you to believe me now. Mrs. Campbell. Well, I'm sure you're quite right, Mrs. Party, since you seem to know everything about everybody in town. But you don't mind if I leave it there, just to confuse you. to go inside and wash up, okay? Hurry along now. How long have you been here? In town? Or around here, watching you cuddling with the man who murdered Jim. You had no right to spy on me. Afraid I'd see something you didn't want me to know? It's not like that, Jake. That's the way it looked. I sent you a letter. I got it. Well, then what are you doing here? I told you I changed my mind. You changed your mind. Kennedy shot Jim down, left you and the boy. And all he had to do was come around here sweet-talking, and you changed your mind. Well, sweet sister-in-law, I ain't changed mine. You were right to send for me. Maybe Jim didn't mean all that much to you. That's a lie, and you know it. Yeah? Is that why Kennedy's all but moved in? And Jim only did a month. Jake, you don't understand. Look, when I wrote you, I was upset. I was grieving so much for Jim, I, I didn't even know what I was doing. I just wanted to get even. As far as I'm concerned, that's the only thing you ever did right. I don't care how you changed your mind or why. But that boyfriend of yours killed my brother. No, Jake! He killed Jim. Now it's his turn. Well, you know, she lost her husband. You've got to consider the shock, the deep distress. I, I agree it was wrong, but I can understand why she wrote the letter. How do you feel about it? I'm not sure. It's a little strange when someone you think is a friend wants you dead. Well, in a moment of anger, yes, but that's long gone. I realize that now. I, I guess I was a little rough on her when she told me.
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was angry. <laughs> come on, come on. Kenny Jake was here. I tried to talk to him, but he's determined to kill you. All right, now, don't you worry about it. I'm going to take care of it myself. What I need now is an exact description of it. Get down, get down! Get over here against the wall, quick! Kenny, stay down. Now stay down. Come on. Stay low. Get over in that corner. Kenny, get down. If you don't want those others to get hurt, you better come out of there. Candy, let me try to talk to him. You tried that. Well, maybe I can make him listen now. Jake? Jake, I know you don't care what happens to me, but Kenny's in here. He's Jim's son. So much for that. Can you spot him? Not from here. When I tell you, you wave that in front of the window. Not bad, Kennedy, but not good enough. You better come out of there. If I don't, that house is going to look like a sieve. and Kenny are in here. They don't mean a thing to me. You got two minutes to come out of there. Why, he's your own brother-in-law. He saw us together. He thinks I didn't love Jim. There, I try to circle out the back door and run toward the barn. Candy, be careful. I'll try. Why didn't you shoot me in the back? This is going to be self-defense if anybody asks. All right, you, your turn, Campbell. Get up. Candy? It's all right, Lisa. Get some rope. You were lucky you had help, Ranch Hand. Get up.
you needed some time to think. It's been several days. I did some thinking. Kenny and I are leaving tomorrow. I found a job over in Morgan County. It's actually working out quite nice. Uh, Ed Randolph said he'd take the farm on shares along with his own. He's going to take care of the house, the barn. Why? Why, Lisa? It's too much work for a woman. I can't expect you to go on helping me forever. Helping's not the word I had in mind. I want to marry you, Lisa. No. Candy, it's too soon for that. Take your time. There's no rush. Take all the time you want. I'm the woman who sent for a man to murder you. Remember? All right. You were hurt. You were upset. You wanted revenge. You're human, Lisa. You made a mistake. Show me someone who hasn't. I made a very big mistake. All right, but it's over, and it's behind us. That's no reason to run, Lisa. That's exactly what you're doing. Yes, Candy, I'm running. I'm running from everything I want. But there is no way in the world it's going to work. We love each other. We'll make it work. No. No, Candy, just accept it. No. Tell me. Kenny is five years old. And every day he asks me when his father, his real father, is coming back. Now, if we got married, what would happen when he's 12 years old and he asks me what happened to his father? What would I tell him? That I killed him. And that would destroy all of us. I'm sorry. Betty Randolph is coming over to help me finish packing. Walk in sunshine. Always. This, uh, I got this letter from Tim Henry in Willow Bend. Yeah, I know him well. He owns a livestock company. Yeah, that's right. But we want to buy some horses from him. Made him sound awful good in the letter, but... But you don't know him, and you're wondering if he's telling the truth or trying to say some crew bait. That's right. It's a long ride over to Willow Bend. I thought you might be able to help. Just a minute, Joe. I'll be right with you. Take your time. I would. Hello, Joe. Clyde. Hi, Sarah. Hello, Miss Sellers. May I be of some service to you? Uh, yes, I uh, have come to make a deposit. Oh, that's fine. Let's see here. 
$2,480, plus your usual five deposit, plus my ten. No, no, uh, my uh, 25. <laughs> brings the total to 2,505, plus your 10 brings you to 2,515. <laughs> I wanted to surprise you. I wanted to be the one. You are the one. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a long oh, day. Hello, Come. Mr. Barker. Oh. Hello, sir. <laughs> Mr. Barker, uh, uh, we, we've been building us a mountain. Five, ten dollars at a time. Twenty-five hundred dollars and we can get married. And today we finally made it. I've got some good news, too. I'm retiring at the end of the month. You're going to take my place. You're the new manager, Wade. Oh, Wade. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Barker. Clyde, I, uh, I was going to talk to you about this later today, but since Sarah was here, it seemed fitting. That's all right, Mr. Barker. Come. Happy for Wade. Congratulations, Wade. Thank you both of you. Thank you, Clyde. I, I didn't expect this. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Good luck to both of you. Thank you, Mr. Barker. And Clyde, I... I'm sorry, I... I wished it could have been both of us. <laughs> oh, don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, Hank. Look at him, all dressed up like a city dude. <laughs> oh, we sold our furs and we oh, had a good no. day's pay, yeah. and we're gonna take old Wade out for a drink. No, thanks, boys. Can't do it right now. Maybe later on. Uh, don't worry about these folks. Bring them along. Uh, I can't right wait, now. Wait, wait. I'll see you tonight. All right. Hey, tonight. that ain't like the old Wade we used to know. He's getting high tone, too big for his old friends. Let's mess him up and make him look like yeah. Let's mess. Let's come mess. On, oh, come all on. right, boys. That's enough. I used to camp with these fellas on the bitter route. They're good men. Until he gets full of the giant. Come on, Wade, let's go to the saloon. Come on. <laughs> Come on, let's get to the bar. All right. Come on, let's take Wade with us. Come on, Wade. Look at the mess you made. I gotta clean it up. You. Sorry, gentlemen. Hey, wait, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Uh, who was that you wanted, Joe? Oh, Tim Henry. You can trust Tim. He's all right. Oh, thanks. Mighty good to me. Just bring a hammer and a nail. Yes, ma'am. Your slightest wish is my command. That should be right in the center. Uh -huh. Here. There you go. Hmm. What do you think? Tomorrow. I think tomorrow is long enough. This mean you get married tomorrow. Oh, Wade. I want to, more than anything. Oh, why not? Because we can't. You've got to add another bedroom and enlarge the kitchen. Well, I've got to make all the arrangements for the church and, and the party afterwards and the invitations and the... Oh, there are thousands of things. All right, then. Day after tomorrow. <laughs> no. At least three weeks. Oh, Wade. I'm only going to be married once. And it means so much. Please. Three weeks, and no more. Oh, no. Not another one. It's the last one. <laughs> right there. Here. 
I hear you had some trouble with those two trappers. You was trying was fast. That was no trouble. I just threw them out. Oh. Well, I thought they were friends of yours. No, they still are. They just had too much to drink, and they were wrecking the place, so I had to whack them. Oh, they'll forget it. We pound on each other all the time. Come here. <laughs> oh, Wade. Are you sure you're not going to miss the mountains? The hunting and the trapping and the prospecting? Oh, I'll miss it. When the temperature drops below zero in my chill brains remind me what it's like standing hip deep in the snow, I'll miss the mountains like I'll miss a toothache. No, I won't miss it. You know, Sarah, time comes in a man's life when... when he wants to get warm and come in from the weather outside. That's when I started to work for the trading post. You're very sure. It was what I wanted even before I met you. You couldn't drive me out of town now. No, I'm glad. No. You just stir up that fire and I'll make some coffee and sandwiches and... And then what? I and then we'll talk. wrong what is it I just had a little headache but it's gone now nothing's wrong it's all right it's all right It's like Wade's buckskin over there, doesn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. Could be, but there's a lot of buckskins around. Yeah. It's not mentioned in here, either. You don't live in Willow Bend, do you? At least I have never seen you around here before. Oh, I... I live up in the mountains. Oh, I see. Well, I'm going to need a lot more information before I can be of any help to you. I can get it by mail, say, uh, oh, two, three weeks. What about telegrams? Can you send telegrams? Yes, I could. That is, if you're willing to pay for them. It cost about, uh, oh, ten, twelve dollars. How long will it take? Well, this is Tuesday, say, uh, Friday. I'll surely have it by then. All right. I'll be back. Any time afternoon, Mr. Uh... Mr. You didn't give me your name. be at least two years older than you claim they are, which is not too bad for a horse trader. <laughs> Candy, what do you think? I'll let you know after you set the price. I'll tell you, Tim, they're a fine piece of animal flesh. We'll take them. What do you want for them? Isn't that Wade Turner? Yeah, that sure is. It's funny. Didn't even say hello. I wonder what he's doing here in Willow Bend. It could be if he wanted you to know, he'd have stopped and told you. I know. I went in to say hello, and Mr. Barker told me. Wait, something wrong. 
bad news, Sarah. I didn't want it to come like this. But I suppose now's a good time as any. Sarah, we just can't get married. I'm sorry, Sarah. I don't want to hurt you. It's the last thing in the world I want. No, I don't believe. You can't be serious. It's been two years, Wade. You quit the mountains. You took the job with Nevada Trading. I thought it was going to be forever for us. I keep telling you, Sarah, I'm sorry. What have I done? Nothing, not a thing. Is there someone else? No. And I never will be, either. But you won't marry me. No, Wade. That won't do. There has got to be more reason than that. That's Mother. She wants me upstairs. You wait, please. You'll be here when I get back. Sarah, it's all been said. You'll be wanting this. Well, if it isn't a prodigal son. Accomplished? Yes, sir. I thought I'd get back sooner. I just barely made it by closing time. I'm sorry. No harm done. I took your place and it gave me a chance to let a lot of old customers know I was leaving. Now, here's that uh, invoice on the Grim Hill mine shipment. Thanks. Oh, uh, Mr. Barker, your wife wanted me to remind you to be sure and be home early tonight. Because... Oh, yes. We're, we're having guests for dinner. Yeah. Well, wait. It's almost closing time. You might as well lock the door behind me. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've been wondering, Wade, don't you? Sometimes miss being up in those mountains instead of being cooped up in a place like this. I like it here. Yeah? It's a good idea, Mr. Barker, isn't it? Keeping his lamp on top of the safe at night. Keeping the shades up so the sheriff can look in when he makes his rounds. Keeps the robbers away. Beautiful day, isn't it? Nice and sunny. Tray. They slip on top, all made out and signed. Oh, I got a check here for fifty dollars made out to me. I'm gonna need the cash for the weekend. How do you want it? Why, why don't you let me have all one? So I get a lot of bills in my pocket. I feel like a rich man. Well, you sure do make big figures for that ledger. A couple of numbers almost fills a whole page. I didn't know better. I'd think you were going blind. Here's your money. Thanks. I'll lock up behind you. All right. He didn't give you any reason, huh? No reason. He just said that it was over, and that's all. Well, it doesn't sound like way there's going to be something wrong. Well, Joseph, there are some things that I can't control. And if Wade chooses not to marry me, there's, there's nothing I can do about it.
anyway. Hi, Joe. I keep it dark in here. A little bit. I hadn't noticed. You know, the place looks real good. Done a lot of work since I was here last. Most of the sailors work. Are yeah, you and Sarah gonna live here after you married? We had planned to. What's the matter, Wayne? Nothing. I talked to Sarah. She send you out here? No, she wouldn't. She. She's too proud. What happened between you two? Made a mistake. People make mistakes. Saw the, uh, saw the pack horse outside. Got a lot of grub there. Mr. Barker, know you're leaving? He will. There's a letter in his desk. And the company money is right where it's supposed to be. Every penny. Well, we've been friends a long time. A man doesn't just quit his job and leave the woman he loves for no reason. Let me help you. All right. You want to help? Just get out of here and leave me alone, Joe. Hey, you want to get rid of all your friends, huh? Goodbye, Joe. Whitland? Are you worried about Wade? Both. Well, he's thrown away everything he's ever worked for. His, his job, Sarah. Well, you know, Wade's been pretty much of a loner. Sarah's got to... Well, she's got to take care of her mother. Maybe... Well, it's a possibility that Wade just uh, decided that he... Didn't want to assume the double responsibility. No. I don't believe that. He loves her too much. It's got to be something else. So you think he's in some kind of trouble and you uh, offered to help? Hmm? What did he say? <laughs> Told me to mind my own business. No. Same thing you're going to tell me. Good night, Joseph. Good night. Sarah? I kept telling myself not to come out here, not to beg. But I came anyway. I didn't invite you in, but I, I was just leaving. At night? Well, I, I like riding at night. Wade! We had so much. Where did it go, Wade? What happened? Who knows, Sarah? I have to know. You were going to marry me, and now you're not. Now, you can't just ride away and leave me wondering. It's not fair. You have to tell me why. Well, it, it's, it's just gone. Wade, do you love me? Wade? What is it? What is it? Wade, what's wrong? Wade! Just go, Sarah. I don't want to hurt you. Just, just go. resignation but no explanation and when an employee departs suddenly we check his accounts as a matter of course we found a shortage of five thousand dollars well he's not a thief we'll have to bring him back if there was a mistake he could straighten it out 
Mr. Barker, if you'll sign this complaint, I'll get a posse organized. Well, let me go on ahead and see if I can find him. This is the law's business, Joe. I know that, but I've trapped with him. I know the country he'll head for. Wind River around Three Peaks. Could save somebody from getting hurt. What about it? All right, I'll give you three days. And I'll come with a posse for both of you. Good enough. Hey, tell Sarah not to worry. I'll pick up what I need in town. Right. Open your eyes. Open, 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 open. Oh, I know it hurts, but come on. Open again. Open. That's it. Now, once more. Oh, that's... Well, it's the occipital lobe of the brain. That's the sight control. That's located back here. Now, on, on you, that's uh, directly beneath this scar. Now, your initial pain, that was caused by pressure or a, a bone splinter. The injury healed. And uh, nature repaired anything that was really wrong. Now, there's an old friend of mine, and he's the dean of a medical college in Boston. I uh, sent him your symptoms by telegram, and he consulted some other doctors. And they feel that uh, a growth started on the occipital lobe. In other words, a tumor. Well, now, that has grown large enough to cause us trouble. You mean there's something growing inside my head that's getting bigger all the time? Yes. And you can't help me, huh, Doc? No, I can't. But a surgeon might. Surgeon? He's gonna get inside of my head? Yes. Ah. Well, he'd uh, lift a piece of your skull and remove the growth. Suppose he misses. You'd be blind. Or dead. That's a possibility. But this is one of the oldest operations known to medical science. Egyptian surgeons were doing it a thousand years ago. Now, without this operation, you will go blind. And without it, the growth can also kill you. Well, it's... It's just not for me, Doc. It's your only chance. I said no. Here. These will help some. Thanks. Hi, Sarah. Hello, Clyde. Is there anything I can do for you? No, I uh, thought it might be the other way around. The news got out some way, and everybody knows about the missing money. They're starting to say some pretty terrible things about Wade. I, I just thought maybe you could use a friend. Thank you, Clyde, but I am just not listening to any gossip. You know, we weren't always such strangers, you and me, before Wade came. Whenever you needed a friend or help or just a shoulder to cry on, well, you always... Turn to me. Nothing's changed with me, Sarah. I just wanted you to know that. Thank you, Clyde. But when Joe brings back Wade, everything will be all right. I didn't know uh, Joe was going out looking for Wade. Yes, he, uh, he thinks he's up at Three Peaks. I'd like to have a word with you, if I might. I'll, I'll be on my way, sir. Mm -hmm. See you, officer. Yeah. That's too bad about old Wade, isn't it? Of course, he's been acting kind of strange for some time now, I guess. You're going to make sure everybody knows about it, too, aren't you? A fellow like Wade just won't change like that unless, unless something happened to him. Well, he certainly changed a lot. Yeah. I just wonder if it might not have something to do with that ruckus he had with those, those trappers. Well, I left before it started, but I guess it's possible. I wouldn't hurt none to talk to him. 
Boys over to Saloon said that they rode out here for Elk Creek looking for new territory for their trap lines. You know, they've known Wade an awfully long time. Yeah, I thought about that, too. We saw Wade's horse tied up in front of the doctor's office over at Willow Bend. He didn't tell me anything about that. Well, a feller gets to feeling puny. He wants to see a doctor, but if he figures the news is going to be bad, probably wouldn't want to worry nobody or hurt him, so he might choose a doctor out of town. Reckon? Wade would do that. Well, Candy and I thought we'd take a little ride and see what we could find out. Of course. Can I go with you? I mean, just waiting here for some kind of word is terrible. I'd like to do something to help. Sure. Be glad to have you. I'll go change it. It'll only take a minute. I'll get Betty Perkins to take care of the store. Bad hurt? You mean that little thing we had at Nevada trading? No, ma'am. Well, you've known Wade a long time. Have you ever known him to act irrationally? Ear what? Uh, strange. Well, ma'am, we're all of us kind of strange. Well, what she means is that Wade ever tear anything up without any reason or anything. He tore up some, but he generally had a reason. Like the time he got mad at that hammerhead gray horse. What'd he do? Nothing. Kill a cub, too. <laughs> Oh, Wade, he figured he could ride anything with hoofs and horsehide. But you know that old Gray? She just pitched him right up there with the sparrows. <laughs> Come down in the rocks. Oh, and he did some snoring. 
When he woke up, though, he was just yelling like a cougar. Didn't hurt nobody, though. Was he hurt badly? Oh, he's bleeding on the back of his head. Yeah, he said he had a headache like there was a beaver inside all chewing out. A few days, he's fine. That was just before he went to Virginia City. Well, thank you. Joe Cartwright. Hey, you all right? Yeah. And what happened back there? I found your stuff on the trail. Uh, the horse spooked. What you doing up here, Joe? I was looking for you. I told you to leave me alone. I know what you're telling me, but you got some unfinished business back in Virginia City. What kind of business? Money. $5,000 short in Nevada trading. I thought... Oh, no. I put the money in the safe, all of it, every, every cent of it. Look, I believe you, but you're gonna have to come back and mean straighten things out. All right. Anything you say, Joe. Go ahead, let's get started. Stand easy, Joe. Real careful now. Drop your gun belt. You mind putting that hammer down? That's my gun you're holding. It's got a hair trigger. Good. It'll discourage you from making any sudden moves. Come on, Wade, you don't want to shoot me. I sure don't, but I will before I let you take me back to Virginia City. You know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Man steals $5,000 and runs, he covers his trail. The trail was clear and easy to follow. He even dropped your canteen. Why won't you go back with me? Uh, come night, I'm riding out of here. I'll take your horse over the peak somewhere over there. By the time you find him, I'll be long gone from here. Yeah, a man travels at night, stays in the shade, and keeps his eyes almost closed. You got something wrong with your eyes, don't you? There's nothing wrong with my eyes. I got a bandana in my hand. What color is it? What's well, the difference? I think you're blind. What color is it? That's blue. I don't have a bandana in my hand, Wade. I've got your broken glasses. What'd the doctor say? What doctor? The one you went to see in Willow Bend about your eyes. Has nothing wrong with my eyes, Joe. I got over that pass at night in the dark. Pulling two horses is gonna be pretty rough. It's a narrow ledge. That don't wear me a bit. Yeah, it might bother your horse. One slip and you can whistle Dixie all the way to the end before you hit the bottom. Looks like you're losing your shade. You're gonna have to move pretty soon. The sun's gonna be in your eyes. You you think that makes a difference? I know it does. Well, if you believe that and try getting away, I'll I'll give you four to one. I'll drop you right in the tracks. It's a common thing. Fear of the surgeon's scalpel, particularly when the operation involves the brain. After all, that's the center of it. Everything we are, everything we can be. Yeah. Afraid I'd have my doubts. I'd be scared to death. I think I would too. And I know that the operation has been done successfully many, many times. Is it the only hope? Well, I'm not an expert. I'm not a brain surgeon. I'm just a country doctor doing the best he can. But in my opinion, it's his only hope for a normal life. We'll talk to him. Get him to change his mind. Well, I hope so, and soon, because time is a very important yeah. factor. How much time has he got? Well, only a guess. Judging from the change in his condition between his first and second visit here, 
It would indicate that the pressure of the growth has increased rapidly. He's a changed man. Well, that's understandable. At first, the pain was mild, and now it's almost unbearable. Blazing headaches and irrational rage, and he's lashing out like a, like a wounded animal. Doc, when one of them things hits him like that, does he know what he's doing? I doubt it. That's why I'm afraid that he might hurt himself or somebody else. Giving Sarah a chance to be free. She's got a mother to take care of. She don't need no invalid husband. She loves you. I don't want her to pity me. I don't want her to spend her life savings on a doctor who might not be able to help me. You ever notice how people look at a blind man? Yeah, I've noticed. I never thought about it till I realized I was going blind myself. Imagine me working at the trading post. Can't even see the figures on the ledges. Or working in the store, can't even see the shelves. <laughs> they shoot horses that break a leg. What I got is worse than a broken leg. Why don't you shut up, Wade? I'm tired of hearing you feel sorry for yourself. Hold it. I'll shoot. You don't want to shoot me. You want to shoot yourself. Where are you going? Back to Virginia City. I'm wasting my time here. I'm right here, Wade. I'm right here. I guess we'd better start back.
No use hiding, Wade. You're gonna die anyway. Blind man with no food and water can't last too long. Yeah, it may grieve for a while, but she'll get over it. And I'll be there. There's Clyde. I'll tell you about it on the way back. You make it? Or are you feeling too sorry for yourself? I think between the two of us, we can make it. It's all arranged. Dr. Mills' friend in Boston recommended a surgeon in San Francisco. Betty's going to take care of the store and my mother. Yeah, well, you hurry back, because you're going to have the biggest wedding reception Virginia City's ever seen. Thank you. Joe, thanks for everything. Good luck. <laughs> 